Hi, my name is Devin Coates and this is my pitch for my first year final major project, The Family Business. So, the story of my short film is about a old-timey mafia group who um, are, you know, they, they follow the traditional uh, codes and conventions of uh, general mafia. They wear nice suits, they speak nice, except I throw all of this out of the window because they get stuck in tradition. All of their traditions are you know, you have to rob banks and mug people, but they keep getting caught by this. And uh, once a house robbery goes horribly wrong, uh, they have to run and they have to think of new ideas. And one of those ideas is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is cryptocurrency and it's a legal way of making a crap ton of money if you know what you're doing. Um, so they invest all their time in Bitcoin and they eventually do get a lot of money, but as this, as this is a Mafia movie about four complete idiots, there's about to be something that goes wrong. So, who did I produce this for? I produced this for the Barnes Film Festival. Uh, the Barn, Barnes Film Festival is a very popular film festival in London, uh, and they, I just wanted to do this for them because they, their rules are flexible and they can pretty much let me do whatever I want in a short time span. So the rules are pretty much just, it has to be under 10 minutes, uh, has to be submitted by at least September, even that says, doesn't say September, um, UK residents only and no theme requirements, so I, I, they pretty much gave me free will, but it has to be under 10 minutes, so it, it, it was a good one to choose, and I think that they will like it. So here is a snippet of my production, it's a short three minute introduction, this is the I think the first kind of major portion of it, and then a small, uh, and, then, and then the intro, and then it ends. So, He also knows his way around the pair of flyers.
that was that. So, okay, so that was a small uh, snippet of just the first part of my production. Uh, it was just the pretty much the introduction to my characters, what role they play, and you know why they're here. Um, so, I wanted to host this this on YouTube because YouTube is a wide, easily accessible, and easy to use platform used by millions of people every day. Um, and it's just where I've mainly been uploading most of my projects anyway. So uh, I've also done some uh, research into YouTube. Uh, so as you can see here, Netflix and YouTube in this uh, in this graph here are the most uh, highly uh, selected out of the out of the few. Uh, and I've also um, talked about you know some of the social medias people use and how this can correlate to your know, platform in case I want to upload it onto uh, like Instagram or something for other people to see, because Instagram is also a widely used platform. So my target audience, my target audience is uh, 16 to 18 year olds. <coughs> and the reason why I wanted to do this is because mafia movies, you can't go anywhere without seeing you know, <coughs> guns, blood, and swearing. So I can tailor this for younger audiences because they probably wouldn't their parents probably wouldn't want them to watch it. So, these surveys, I've asked their ages and their gender. So, most of it, most of my answers are under 18s, and the rest of them are you know, male to females. So, average is to uh, 16 to 18 year old males. So, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to build an audience profile. I want to know who wants to watch my program and, you know, tailor the experience for them. So, in this small section here, I deducted that they are 16 to 18 year old males that uh, prominently watch my, uh, my productions. Next, I asked about their spending habits, how much, how much money they make and how much they spend it on. What I was doing here is I wanted to, it, like, let's say they, uh, they, they spend loads on, on, on accessories, I'd, I, I'd get those characters wearing said accessories to appeal to what they like to buy to keep them interested. Uh, and in here, it's you know, how much money they spend a day. Again, uh, my production is centered around money because they're making money off Bitcoin and, the, and uh, they run into a problem with all of their money and lose it all. So with all of these spending habits here, I can, I can safely you know, uh, tailor it to their appeal because they like to spend a lot of money. Prior the, so in these graphs here, they prioritize on food, accessories, and clothes. Again, this is more. This appeals to my audience uh, target more. So, I also this was this was asked in the first uh, part. You know the, the social medias. This is again for uh, my so, uh, a social media campaign, or I could also include I don't know Snapchat or Instagram in um in my production. So let's say they uh, they because they they're, they're in, the, the story behind this is that they're an ancient old family and their um, traditions have been around since the 1950s and they probably haven't gotten used to the internet yet. So they could discover what these are and see if, you know, what they can do to help that. So, prioritizes Instagram and Snapchat, spends at least two hours on them a day. So this is again just to build who my audience are and what they, they do. So here, my final audience profile, as, as we've deducted from the three port those sections there, they are 16 to 18 year olds, who like to buy clothes and accessories, and also use Instagram. That is my demographic. So I made an infographic for both platform and target audience. Here it is here. It's just a kind of side-by-side -side comparison of both, of both research I've done. I decided to include this infographic because it's easier to display all the information I've, I've uh, collected. So it just kind of, it's key points of all of the information I've gathered into a nice little infographic. So idea generation. When I first started my project, I thought of three main ideas. One of them was two clones, or two identical twins, who uh, have been discovered online and have been blowing up on the internet. So they have, uh, they, they've like, you know, there'll be like a documentary or sort of a mockumentary about their day-to-day -day life. The second one is, this is uh, Focus by Hocus Pocus. It was one of the songs used in Baby Driver. I really like this song and I love how they choreographed it. I wanted to make something like that just to just to kind of mess around with music because last time I did a music video it wasn't so good but I want to try it again now that I have all these you know, experiences and skills. Next one is of course the Mafia. I, went, I, I chose this one because um, 
I, I sent out a survey and people kind of thought this one did better. And I was also told by uh, my peers that uh, these two might not work, especially in a music video, especially because it'll be really hard to do something like that if I'm cloning myself. So I, the inspirations that I got for these ideas was one, the first one, I used my brain. That's kind of the major one. I thought the first two ideas up, and then uh, this one kind of, I got inspirations from different other Mafia movies. So uh, this is Brandon Rogers. He's a uh, in influential comedian on YouTube that uh, plays different characters in the videos he, he uh, makes. So let's say he's one character and then he dresses up as another one, but you can clearly tell that he is playing the same person. So that's what I wanted to do with the sort of the cloning idea, because he can do it very well with the, with the people he plays, so it's, it's really good. Uh, second one, again, Baby Driver, that, that was a bigger inspiration um, of mine, because it's just a really good film. I, I wanted to kind of uh, experiment with uh, music. And, then, and the next one was, uh, that was my idea, that was me. Um, so the research I did, uh, are for, me, for the majority of my, uh, my research I looked into crime, because it's a mafia, and you can't go two seconds in a mafia movie without seeing a bit of crime. So I looked into, because this is England, the majority of crimes that are committed are knife crimes. Uh, I went on a uh, government statistics organisation uh, by the National Crime Agency in uh, England. And this is a, a kind of little uh, t table that they've collected on knife offences in England. Uh, and I also looked at the five families of New York. One of them was the Lachis family. Uh, the five families of New York pretty much ran the city. They were the backbone of pretty much every mafia film in, like, based around New York area. And the next one was a complex storyline called The Hero's Journey. It's about, you no, know, just it's like a big clock, and uh, they have little portions of the clock that show you, uh, you know, where the hero goes, what he does, what he battles, things like that. This is for pretty much stereotypical film. So let's say, you know, it starts starts here, his everyday life, then it goes here, he travels to a special place, and then here he fights someone, and then he beats that person, and then goes back to his regular world. That's how that would work. And it's kind of just, it just it's another sort of uh, backbone to pretty much every story. I wanted to use this because it was very complex, but I, but as well as simple to understand once it's put onto a screen. So, uh, another huge portion of my research was drugs and where they were coming from. So, here is a drug chart um, uh, to <coughs> where, you know, where, where the drugs are coming from, the uses, and how, and how often they are distributed. Uh, I also looked into, because this is um, on, my, on my website, I looked into old crime versus new crime, which is where I got the idea for bitcoins from. Um, so this is because uh, all of these, all of these activities here are what mafia do, and this is what uh, you know, there's prostitution, there's drug trafficking, there's also money laundering. That is a huge part of mafia, and I think that if I include portions of this in my production, it will be really, be really authentic. So I also looked into new crime, as stated earlier. This is cryptocurrency. This is WannaCry, also known as the NHS virus. It stole. Uh, three billion from England in damages and all across the world. Uh, this is you know, fishing, uh, crypto, crypto fraud, which is you know stealing bitcoins from from people. And then the last bit of research was my um, my track, uh, my test sheets. So this is um, this is a tracking shot. I looked into tracking shots from, as you saw at the start. He was walking down the grass and into the driveway. I also looked into low angle shots. Low angle shots, are, I used a low angle shot later in the movie, but uh, it just it, I didn't have time to show it because it's a 10 minute, or almost a 10 minute film. Um, so yeah, I looked into these because they are well known, and I think I've done them in the past, but I haven't talked them off so well. But again, now that I have all these skills and experience, I feel like I could probably do these as shown in a start with the tracking shot. And these are my artists and professionals. This is Wes Anderson. He's directed things like um, the Grand Budapest Hotel uh, and things like that. So, and this is also Quentin Tarantino. He's a very influential director and pretty much the uh, main um, inspiration behind my, my piece. So the adaptation of my story, uh, it went from drugs <coughs> to Bitcoin. Because I think if I focus more on drugs, it's kind of a bit naff. Because it's just, 
you know, you've seen it before, you've seen this in every single movie. So I decided to go focus on more of the Bitcoin side and the drug side uh, because it would just be more interesting to the audience because they haven't really heard of this that much and uh, it would be, you know, it would be good for them to learn about it. And because it went from uh, it went from a really serious, like you know, it was really went from a really serious uh, gangster movie I had in mind, and it turned into, you know, a really silly comedy because you know how they start failing and failing. I was, you know, the ideas I had planned, I had planned for like you know massive store robberies, gun fights, gun ch uh, car chases, but I just realised I couldn't do that because one, if I use guns outside, I'd probably get arrested. Two, I don't, none of us can drive, and three, we can't just ask someone to, hey, can we film in your store with guns? It's a really good idea. Uh, so yeah, that is the adaptation of my story, that is my synopsis and everything like that. Any questions? How long did it take to film your whole uh, production? whole production took around four or five days to film each individual part because we had several locations that were used and also just um, I had, uh, had problems with my actors so they couldn't film on certain days, so we had to really stretch it out quite a lot. But yeah, um, pretty much took around four or five days. So obviously at this point you've made your production. Yeah. So you were saying that in your research, uh, looking at like the popularity of Instagram, obviously you would use that to promote the film, but also your characters in the film might come to learn about that because they're kind of entering this new era. Yeah. Do they come to learn about that in your film? No. Right. That was, again, some of the adaptations, but I, I, I think I was going to include Instagram, but I think I just didn't really have time because mm -hmm. I had bigger topics to, you know, and bigger things to uh, focus on in the film. Yeah, and on a similar note, sorry because I'm being a little bit picky, that's me, um, you said in your research that what the Mafia do is money laundering, drugs and prostitution, so why did you choose to have your Mafia robbing houses? Well, obviously that's a bit more hands-on than the yeah, math you would normally get. It's because we couldn't really get hands-on with trucks. Uh, so we decided, because they, as you saw earlier, they would, you know, because it, it's quite a, uh, a wealthy house. So, because these guys are trying to get back on their feet. They, because as, as explained, it's, um, you know, they're, they're coming in, they're looking really badass, they're explaining all of their characters and what they do, but then they end up failing. So it would be uh, kind of telling them that they're trying to get back on their feet which is simple stuff to try and uh, get sort of a, a, a platform to stand on in the crime world, kind of. Cool. Yeah. Okay, lovely. What, what I'm getting from your film is at the start is that they've gone through a sort of, so someone's been arrested or something's gone completely wrong. Is that uh, Yeah, so, so, yeah. Gone so at the out. start um, they trigger an alarm yeah. and they weren't really prepared for an alarm so they just run, that's pretty much it, that, that's what goes wrong. Why would they just shoot? They don't have any guns. But they, there's a bit at the beginning where they, he's shooting someone. Because mm. I think what I was trying to go with that is, is that's what their characters would usually do. But now that they're kind of, they're, wa they're, they're washed up now. And ah, it's kind okay. of like, uh, they used to do this, but now it's just kind of a bit... Changing with the time. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Lovely. I think then it's uh, fairly comprehensive. Thank you very much. That's a really good one.